Hi and welcome to the FA TV. We are here at One to One Mining Investment Cape Town and I'm delighted to be joined today by James Lorimer, the Shadow Secretary for Mineral Resources. Thank you so much for joining us today, James. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So maybe to, to start, you could just give us a bit of a bit of information on your on your background and, and some. Okay, I'm a detribalized journalist. Uh, first half of my career, I was a reporter, editor, media manager, and consultant. And then I went into politics, got into Parliament in 2009. Was first of all a bit of a utility player, but then was put onto mineral resources in 2012 and have not left. Never looked back. It's, it's the most interesting place for me to be. It's absolutely fascinating field. Yeah, and what you know, obviously, with with your with your insight, that what do you see as the kind of the biggest threats to the to the mining industry here in South Africa? Uh, many and varied. You could probably divide them into four categories. And the first one is bad regulation, badly implemented. And by bad regulation, I mean things like the Black Economic Empowerment Regulation, which basically says that if you get a mining license, you have to immediately turn over thirty percent of it to Black Empowerment companies, which really amounts to cronyism. Uh, so it's an extra expense, it uh, diminishes the value of any uh, deposit uh, and is a huge disincentive to people investing. Um, it's also badly implemented, all these rules, and there are many rules, um, because it's not only black economic empowerment, it's also things that they call local and local procurement, where you have to buy a certain amount of mine supplies from the surrounding community, and sometimes it's a rural community which simply cannot supply those goods, which means, in effect, you just build an army of middlemen, which again, Mm. increases your expenses and makes any mine less profitable. Um, then they're badly implemented. There's a lot of corruption and incompetence in the department. Um, people wait months, even years, to get a mining license and sometimes resort to bribery. And I know people who resort to bribery and still don't get a license. So all of this means it's very, very difficult to start a new mine, which has been reflected in the poor performance of the growth of new mines in, in South Africa. Uh, so that's the first one. The second one is is illegal mining and mine crime. And this, you know, we're a, a very criminalized society. Uh, there are specific types of, of crime that do affect mines. People effectively claim jumping, in a sense, is that somebody will be mining on your territory. And it's very, very difficult to get them to stop. Mm. Um, there's also illegal mining, uh, sometimes on operating mines, sometimes closed mines. Again, it makes it incredibly difficult to operate when all your copper wiring or cabling is being stolen every night. Yes. Um, third big uh, problem uh, or area of problems is a collapse of infrastructure. Transport infrastructure, power infrastructure, our electricity uh, situation is very bad. There's an interesting correlation as electricity outages increase, mining production goes down. It's fairly obvious, but it's shown by the figures. Mm. And we've had terrible problems for the last few years. Uh, and then, of course, there's port infrastructure. It's difficult once you've mined the stuff to get it out because the ports are so badly run. Last but not least, there is the whole category of community resistance to mines on their doorsteps. So there's a problem because communities um, believe that uh, the mineral wealth that is in their area is hugely, uh, should be hugely beneficial to them. Mm. Ignores a lot of realities of mines. It takes a lot of money to take it out. And we need, need a new system uh, to get community buy into mining. Um, we have worked out a plan to, to set up a, a mining development agency, um, which is really a, um, a national agency chaired by somebody of unimpeachable character, like a, a, an ex-Supreme Court judge, perhaps, um, which then decides on projects and allocates, um, allocates uh, contracts, because these are areas where there's often a lot of corruption. Mm. And you have a impartial outside agency sitting in that, that I think the community will see that they get definite benefits because the money's not even stolen. So that would help with um, the kind of problems mines have at the moment, the community resistance to their operations. So, I mean, those are, I've divided them roughly into four areas. As you can see, they're all huge, each one on its yeah. own, but not that difficult to fix. Well, so so what, what do you see as the government's role in, in addressing these and fixing these? How can that be done? First and foremost, change the legislation, get government out of the way. Um, government should be mainly focusing on things like worker safety and environmental impact. Apart from that, they should not be involved. They shouldn't tell you who you buy from, who you hire, any of that stuff. Mm. That'll make mining a lot easier. So that's kind of a withdrawal of government. Um, and then, of course, fixing the, the basics like the infrastructure, um, privatizing um, railways, privatizing ports, privatizing electricity production. 
because that's the you know the state clearly cannot produce it. It's been struggling to fix its its uh, electricity system. Mm. It's not working. Even though you know, we keep being assured, President Ramaphosa told us that mining in Derby yesterday that they had this great plan. Well, it's been in operation for several months now, and there's no discernible difference. If anything, things have got slightly worse. So, you know, the promises that government is fixing it don't really hold water anymore. And um, the only solution really is to get the private sector involved, <laughs> because they'll do a much better job, I think, of fixing this stuff. So, you know, it's obviously been it's been quite a tough time for the mining industry and, and investment into the space is struggling. You know, how, how do you see that we can kind of re-stimulate that and encourage it to, to pick up again? A lot of it is to win back the credibility of, the, of South Africa as a mining mm. destination. Uh, people have been given a lot of false dawns over the last few years. Yes, we're turning it around. We've got this reform plan or that measure. And they never really come off, and the trend continues to be downward. Mm. And I think the investor community is extremely skeptical about South Africa as a place to put their money right now. And so we have to do something that convinces them that we are a worthwhile place to build a mine. Mm. Um, and it's it's not rocket science. Change the regulations, get government out of the way, start providing proper policing. Uh, you know, policing is something again, uh, President. Uh, Addressed in an offhand remark yesterday at the mining girl, saying, Yes, we had a, uh, a new police unit that was tackling mine crime. Well, tell that to people on the police portfolio committee in parliament. They don't know anything about a new unit. Um, it's all smoke and mirrors. Mm. But once again, you need to take a couple of steps, set up an independent police unit, equip them properly. You know, uh, dealing with mine crime is very difficult, it's quite technical. Mm. So, if, some, if two people are vying for the same property uh, and they both produce paperwork, who's to know which paperwork is fake and which, which is real? Um, if there is a, a place you can go in the police and you don't just get met with a wall of ignorance or and indifference, which is the case at the moment, um, you, you, can, you can quickly find out what's going on and, and enforce the law. And that's all we need. So, you know, government could lead by example and show that it is changing the way that uh, mines operate. And very quickly, I think there would be a turnaround because we have immense mineral wealth uh, waiting to be discovered and developed. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what do you, what do you feel is, what, which commodities do you feel are the most promising in that, in that space? That's a really tough question. Um, we st I, I know that coal has had a bad time, partly because we can't take it out. Mm. Uh, through the ports, and the same with things like manganese and chrome um, and iron. Um, all of those I like. Um, gold is always good. Um, we've still got a lot of it. That sounds like I'm covering my all my bets, but but yeah, I mean I'm I'm very confident that all of those are perennial earners for us. So Excellent. I think they're worth looking at. So thanks, James, and 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 looking forward, you know, what are what are your hopes for the for the for the mining community across across South Africa and, and more broadly across the African continent? Well, across, across South Africa, of course, and I would say this because I'm a politician, we need political change because that's the only way we're going to get the legislative and regulatory change we need. Um, in this broader context and looking further ahead, mining needs to re-establish its credentials as a uh, an industry that is required for development and not an enemy of Little children, rabbits, and bunnies, um, and uh, you know you, you can see why why mining has got a bad uh, a bad rap. Um, there are too many people who are sort of freebooters who come in and try and just strip stuff and don't put anything back. Um, but a lot of the bigger miner companies, particularly those that are listed on exchanges in Europe and North America, are good corporate citizens. Uh, for whatever reason, I mean, they may be kept that way because they have activist shareholders and legislation in their home countries which regulate their behavior. But they are the kind of people that you want mining with you because they are good corporate citizens and they do make sure that they don't leave chaos behind them. So um, we need more of those. And I think we're trending in that direction. Um, and uh, when I think that will lead to an attitude change for most people towards mining and people will realize how valuable it is, and um, that investment will follow. Excellent. Well, we look we, we look forward to, to seeing that play out, I hope. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, James. It's been really fantastic to have you.